Welcome back. So we're going to be going over cascode amplifiers today. Um, before this one, I made a I made a video on um, on, on how to calculate the gain of a cascode amplifier stage. I would highly recommend watching that before we continue on this one because it kind of gives you a kind of gives you a starting point. You know, kind of gets you started on this one, and it's really uh, it's really a good exercise to to go over before this one. And of course. Um, you know, in the recent past, we've been going over a lot of uh, shortcuts and tricks to find gains and all that. But, but this section on cascode amplifiers, I want to do it really seriously. I want to want to do it by the traditional way of learning, so that uh, so that we're not missing out on any any points or we're not taking anything else for granted. Okay. All right. Perfect. So before we start cascode amplifiers, let's just review a few concepts. So let's let's look at this circuit first. I think this should be very evident by now as to what this is. So you guessed it right, you know, this is a common source stage. And uh, what does a common source stage actually do? You give it an input voltage, it converts it into a drain current, right, ID. Right, that's what it does, basically. And do you remember the section we just went over before the cascode ones, the common gate ones? So this is common source. Right, so what does a common source do? It converts an input voltage to drain current. Okay. Now, what does a common gate do? We bias the the transistor and give it an input signal on the source. Right. So hold on one second. Let me draw this thing. Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me. As I told you the current is going to flow in this path. So it's, it's, it's not right to put a, 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 the voltage source here in the path, right? So to be technically correct, what it looks like is this. I mean, you either capacitively connect a voltage source or keep, the, keep this current source and say that it is, it is biased by a current source, right? So what what I'm trying to basically mean is the input sorry not v in this is vb the v bias so what I'm trying to basically say here is the input to the common gate is a current right and you see where this is going common source stage generates a current whereas the input to a common gate stage is a current right so look at what we've done here for a cascode stage we have a common source stage this is a common source and look at this that drain that drain current is the input to this stage do you see that this is the common gate stage common gate right everything else is the same what we have done we've just stacked these two on top of each other do you see that this is just a single wire right so all we're going to do in this specific video is is we're going to look at the various voltage levels on the circuit uh, and kind of figure out what levels of biasing are needed and stuff like that. But first of all, before we proceed, all we have to know is uh, that the, the input stage in a cascode amplifier is the common source stage and the common gate stage is called the cascode stage right and this is called the input stage now input stage is a no-brainer it has a V in there but right but but the one that's stacked above it it's called cascode stage please do not forget this because you know over the next few four or five lectures we're gonna be uh, go, you know we're gonna be referring to this term a lot right the cascode stage so this looks kinda complicated so we're going to draw this pretty simple like the one we saw in the ex in the example right just stack two transistors like that. We have a V out here, and these two are N MOSes. This is V in, this is V B, this is R D, this is M2, this is M1. Am I missing anything? Okay, hopefully not. Now, let's do one thing. Let's call, I mean, let's take a point and call it VX, okay? Vx will act as, I mean, x will act as the source for M2, and x will act as the drain for M1, 
All right, makes sense, right? All right, what we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the minimum level of VB that we need to give to this stage, right? V bias, it's a very important uh, thing, right? Because we can, only after biasing it can we actually work with the circuit. So we're going to work with that. Uh, what I like to do before we do that is just write down, uh, let's say, analogous values. So 4M1. Let's say VGS1, that is for M1, is V in, and see the source is grounded, so it's just zero, right? V in minus VS1, but that's just V in. And let's, what about VDS1? That's again just VX, right? Do you get what is this? Do you get this concept? It's pretty simple, right? The source is grounded, otherwise, it would be VX minus VS, V in minus VS, right? So that's all for M1. What about M2? for M2. We have VGS2 equals, look at this, VG is VB and VS is VX, right? So VB minus VX and VDS2. What is that? V out minus VX. Do you see this? So it's V, oops, looks like a U. V out minus Vx. All right, perfect. So I mean, it helps me a lot when I list these things. Or I mean, before I start, you know, the analogous values. It, it really helps later. And of course, uh, the threshold voltages are just VTH1 and VTH2. Okay. All right. Now let's do. Let's just look at the circuit and see how the biasing should be. So four M1 again. For M1 to be in saturation, what's the condition? VDS has to be greater than or equal to VGS minus VTH. Is that true? Perfect. So what is VDS here? It's so simple. See that? You just grab those values from here and just write down. So VX has to be greater than or equal to VGS is V in minus VTH1. OK? Let's call this equation 1. All right. Okay. All right. So let's look at equa. Let's let's look at this one then. Let's see where else is VX and VB and all that. We're looking for VB first of all. So for M2 we have this. Uh, keep writing with me so that you're not lost. VGS2 equals VB minus VX. So why don't we write VX in? I mean. The, this term in terms of Vx. So this should be Vx equals Vb minus Vgs2. Is that right? Hopefully I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay. This shouldn't be wrong. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do here from one and two equation is just I'm going to substitute the value of Vx from equation two and put it in equation one. Right? It's going to be pretty simple. So VB minus VGS2 has got to be greater than VN minus VTH1. Right? Let's, no, let's not call this an equation. Let's put VB separate. So, so VB has to be greater than or equal to VN minus VTH1 plus VGS2. It's not difficult, right? All it needs is a little bit of analysis. All right, let me quickly draw that diagram again here. I'm not drawing the resistor for now. Okay. Now look at what this means. This is VB and this is V in, right? Now what 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 is this term basically? It's the overdrive voltage of the first transistor. Do you see that? VGS minus VTH for any transistor is the overdrive voltage, right? The other volt, the, the voltage you have more than just the threshold, right? So you've, from here you have VGS minus VTH and this is VGS2, so that's here, right? So this amount, VGS2 and this is the overdrive, right? So what does this mean again? So VB has to be a minimum of the overdrive voltage of the first transistor 
plus VGS2 from the second transistor. Okay, let's not stop here. All right, let's let's look at transistor two for tran. Uh, let's just for M two. Okay, for M two. Let me grab a different color real quick. Okay, let's write the saturation conditions for M two. What is what does it have to be? VDS two has to be greater than or equal to VGS two minus VTH two. Right now, go back up and look at our values. So VGS2, I mean VDS2 is V out minus VX. Let's just put that back there. So V out minus VX has to be greater than or equal to what is VGS2? VB minus VX. I'm sure you can be faster than me here. VB minus VX minus VTH2. Now hey, I see something going on here, don't you? So we have VX, just remove them. So our our Equation from here is V out is greater than or greater than or equal to V B minus V T H two. Let's call this equation four. Okay. Alright, let me grab a different color. I'm gonna have different colors so that I'm not confused. I'm a very confused person anyways. Alright, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna substitute the value of V B from equation three and put it in equation four. First of all, equation three is a very important equation. Let me put a star here. I don't even I know how to put a proper star. Anyways, it's a very important equation. The reason is it gives you the value at which you have to bias the cascode transistor, right? I told you we're going to be encountering that word a lot, you know, cascode stage, I mean cascode device and input device. Okay, we're going to put that value into VB here, into the equation four. All right, so let's put that in equal to, uh oh, I, okay, V in minus VTH1 minus VTH1, what else was there? Plus VGS2, okay, plus VGS2 minus VTH2. Uh oh, all right, computer's kind of slow. All right, now do you see this? This is the overdrive of the first transistor and this is the overdrive of the second transistor. Now it's not VGS1, the reason is because we, we've seen that already, right? Because the source is grounded for the first transistor, so VGS is just V in. Okay, so V in minus VTH1 is the overdrive of the first transistor plus the overdrive of the second transistor, right? So, so what does this mean? This means that the output voltage can take a minimum value of the overdrive of the first transistor plus the overdrive of the second transistor, right? Now let's let's look at what that means. Let's take a different color again. Okay, look here. Say, say I have a simple equation, a simple device like this. Uh, just one transistor, okay? And I have a V out here. So I'm definitely going to have to sacrifice about VGS minus VTH of this transistor at the lower part of my output voltage. Now what does this mean? This kind of this kind of kills your output swing, right? At the output you want to have a nice swing. You want to have nice room to swing like that, right? But what you what the second transistor is doing is it's it's eating away all that swing space. You know, it's called the headroom. I'll talk about headroom in a while. Oh, oh we're out of space. Let's go here and talk about headroom. So in a transistor, if you see, you have VDD, and you have a transistor, and you have a transistor. Probably a resistor in between, okay? So how you can look at it is like a building, okay? So each transistor takes some space because of the overdrive voltage it needs. VGS, or let me just write VOV, which is OV, uh, uh, the overdrive voltage. So if you have only one transistor, the output, this is VDD, okay? Suppose it was 3 volts and the overdrive voltage is say 0.7 volts. You have 2.3 volts for your output to swing up and down. Do You see that? Isn't that nice? But on the contrary, if you take a different structure like the one we have in the CAS code and you have a VDD and you have two transistors there, right? So VOV2, VOV1. So this is 0.7 volts, this is 0.7 volts, and this is just 3 volts. You're already losing 1.4 volts 
trying to drive these two transistors. So your output swing has just 1.6 volts. It, it's kind of kind of limited inside, don't you see? It's kind of constrained inside this space. So it doesn't have wiggle room up there. So it's called a headroom, okay? Just like this, you know, a man stuck in a room. How much room does he have to shake his head or something like that? You know, how much room does he have to jump around? Here he has more. That means there are lesser transistors. Here, because there are more transistors, he has very little room. It's the same way for the output voltage, okay? I'd really uh, recommend rewinding this. If you've done or understood, go back and see if I'm making any sense because this is a very important concept when it comes to analog design, you know? If you use an extra transistor, people are going to ask you as to, you know, why are you doing that, you know? You have to have a good reason to have an extra transistor because you're going to kill your output swing. Make sense? So, of course, this, this does limit your output swing. The cascode stage limits your output swing. Uh, but it's got a lot of uh, benefits that, we'll, that we're going to be talking about in probably the next lectures and a few more after that. We'll, we'll get to the, those when, when we have to, all right? So till now, I mean, for this video, it's just enough if, you, if you've got the idea of the output voltage levels and, uh, and the biasing voltage levels. Great, I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much.